Hi, welcome to the Travel Ones Podcast. Today, my guest is professional bowler Stephanie Johnson. How are you today, Stephanie? I am doing wonderful. Thanks for asking. I appreciate I appreciate the time. It, it's apropos that we're talking about traveling for work, and you're traveling to Minnesota for another bowling tournament. We are. We are in route as we speak. I am the co-pilot at the moment. You're the navigator. Yes. How, if you kind of give uh, your background, I know you're, is it okay for me to call you a world champion? Is that how that works once you win? Oh, absolutely. I earned that. There you go. <laughs> so I, I'm so proud, you know, you're 17 years on the, on the USA team. Uh, 18. Eight, sorry, 18. Yeah, this will be the, the last and final year. But will you come back for the Olympics if they make it a, a sport? That's really not up to me, to be honest. Oh, okay. That's a that's a long battle. So uh, they're fighting the hard fight to get that done. Not sure if that will happen in my lifetime, but we'll see. Yeah. That, crazier things have happened. You never know. Right. Yeah. So as, as being a multi, what, four-time winner on, on the tour and, and 2015 Rookie of the Year, what, what's life like on the tour for a professional bowler? It's not all glamorous, honestly. You know, like I mentioned, we're we're en route to Minnesota. Left about five thirty this morning. So, um, yeah, just, just you do what you got to do. You know, got some wonderful roommates, and you make the best of every opportunity that you have. Yeah, how many tours uh, or how many events are you are you competing on in a year? Uh, this year, I believe, is 11 total. It's okay. a little bit of a condensed schedule. Um, it's kind of something that most of the women were hoping for. Last year was a struggle for many of us traveling yeah. back and forth to a lot of the tour stops, and it just gets really costly. So they did a really good job this year of kind of putting a bunch of different tour stops together in one location to kind of try to cut down on some of those costs. But... Yeah, some of the expenses. Now, does it work? How does it work? At, does or do you get paid regardless of how you place, or do you only get paid when you when you place higher? Yeah, I mean, you got to make the cut to get paid. So okay. that's, that's certainly always the goal every week for all of us ladies. But, Some of us have jobs outside of bowling. You know, bowling is not specifically a sport that is easy to earn a living at, meaning yeah. with no other income. So many of us have other jobs that we do. And, and not all are at bowling lanes. Yeah, you know, it it sounds really similar to uh, professional golf or even um, volleyball tournaments, where most of the professional volleyball players have the other jobs because it doesn't pay unless you're like the winner every every week. Right. Yeah. I mean, a lot of us, like I, I said, we all have other sources of income. Yeah. It's kind of bonus what we get to do. Does the, the sponsorships help out quite a bit for you, or is it just extra? All of that's extra. So we're bowling week in and week out trying to make a check. I hear you. You know, how, how do you deal with that? You know, I know you have two small children. How do you deal balance? You know, you're going to be gone this for four or five days. Is it, is it tough on you sometimes? Yeah, this is this has probably been the hardest being away for so long because normally I, I do travel back and forth, so I'm not gone for my kids as long as I have been. This stretch will be 18 days, um, so it makes it harder. But you know, they're at home with daddy and grandma, so yeah. there's peace of mind in that. You know, knowing they're they're with family, so they know mommy's out working, and I'll be back when I get back. Exactly. Are, are you? Are, do you ever end up missing the, the birthday part? I mean, I know I have two daughters. They're grown now, but I, as much as I travel for work, it was always I missed a birthday party or I miss an event or a game or something like that. I miss their last day of school, yeah. but I substitute teach at their school a couple of days a week, and um, I, I'm sure I did not miss a whole lot 
Uh, my son has a summertime birthday. We celebrated it in May. Oddly enough, I'll actually be home for his actual birthday, so that's kind of nice. But go. my daughter's birthday is in March, so um, I tend to not miss that. That's that's always a good thing. They don't. Yeah. Like I, I have to go to the rodeo every year in Vegas in December, and I I miss my oldest daughter's birthday for ten years straight. So. Yeah, we we made it a point this year because my son has a summer birthday to celebrate it during school year, so some of the kids could actually come. Just yeah. Everybody just gets busy and have different friends, and so that kind of worked out. Yeah, that's awesome. It's always nice when you get the kids on on, on a good page. Yeah. So is that when, when you're on the tour, are you completely responsible for your own your own lodging and food and everything? Or does the, 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 the bowling league help out with that? Nope. We are out here all on our own dime. So we bunk up together as much as we can. We try to cut costs any way possible, you know, with a car rental, with hotel. Kind of what we do every week. Well, and then and then after all that, then you still have to go out and perform at the highest level possible, right? Oh yeah, but we know what we're getting into, so that's yeah. really not an issue. Is do do most bowling tournaments run five or because I saw that some have five, they'll have a five rounds and some are six rounds. Is that is there a standard or is it just varied? Every tournament's a little different. Some of our standard events, we just have two rounds of qualifying, and then they make a cut, and then you bowl again. So, I mean, the goal is obviously to make the cut every week. It doesn't always happen. But the majors that we have are just longer formats, just very similar to golf, I would say. Yeah. Except for in golf, you're, you're trying to get the lower score, and in bowling, you're trying to get the higher score. Right. Have, have, you, have you achieved a 300 in, in a tournament yet? I have not. I do not have a PWBA 300 yet. That's on my list of things to hopefully accomplish in my professional career. Um, or this I weekend. Have quite a few 299s, but that doesn't count. <laughs> have you really? You got? Oh, that's got to be brutal. I mean, someday. It's it's still nice getting a 299, but one pin away. That's got to that's rough. Yeah, you get a you get a PWBA rank when you shoot a 300 game so it would be nice to have well, well go ahead and if you're not doing anything this weekend every time i shoe up i try there you go <laughs> what, what do you think makes the, the the biggest difference between uh you know having a a, a a game of 160 and then a game of 230 or 250 or two, what, whatever i mean i don't understand how how you have the the big disparities i guess very comparable to golf you know we bowl on an invisible golf course so lane to lane it's very different and it's a lot of educated guessing with the bowling ball to use um, where to play on the lane um, not to be too technical but you know we only have 10 frames so it's very easy to if you're lost you know you're not really sure what to do yeah uh, you're, you're not going to bowl good so you know, spare making is obviously key for us. Very much like, you know, golfer having a good putting game. So, uh, you know, I would argue anybody you speak to at our level would agree that spares are very, very critical. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's just like golf where they say, you know, scrambling around the green is, is everything. Exactly. You know, how many balls different balls do you bring with you to a tournament? Uh, we bring anywhere from, I would say, 9 to 15 on average. We have a tour truck that travels week to week, so we're allowed to put nine on there so we don't have to actually have them with us. And um, if we're driving or if we're flying, we usually probably have six additional ones with us. So no different than a golfer carrying multiple different clubs. They all do different things. And um, it's kind of an educated guessing game of what to use and when. So we have practice sessions today for about 90 minutes. And during that practice, we'll try 
you know, multiple different bowling balls, try to play different parts of the lane, get a feel for what our lane pattern is. You know, we do not know it ahead of time. Yeah. And what I mean by that is, you know, how they lay the oil, oil out on the lane. And, you know, sometimes we can rule out balls, but most of the time we don't just because day to day and squad to squad, the more times they strip and re-oil the lane, uh, the pattern ends up changing. So we just have to try to be as smart as we can um, in that moment. Are there specific uh, uh, venues that you enjoy playing at more or, or do better at? I wouldn't say necessarily. I mean, I think, you know, all the centers we visit, they welcome us with open arms. You know, we are so grateful for the opportunity because we didn't have a tour for about 12 years. There was a stretch where yeah. the original uh, women's tour kind of ended. You know, one of the founders was funding it himself, and it just got to a point where that was not really an option any longer. So um, there was a long stretch there where a bunch of us, you know, we didn't have a professional tour to compete on, and it resurged in 2015, so about seven years ago. And, you know, here we are. Yeah. A lot of the girls, you know, are coming out of college. They have something to compete in. So, you know, it's a different kind of animal, and it's just a really cool opportunity for them to be able to do that. Well, I, that's what's so key about people like you that – that keep keep going. Yeah, I was part of a weird stretch there where I graduated from college in 06. The tour had folded when I was a sophomore. And, um, you know, essentially, that was my goal to go yeah. bowl on tour, but it wasn't an option for me. You know, I was part of that collegiate group, if you will, that. Uh, you know, all the superstars of my time, I would say more than half of them don't even bowl anymore because right. there were no opportunities afforded to us. You know, um, my outlet ended up being Team USA um, when I tried out in 2005 to kind of fill that void of, you know, competitive bowling. It's not something I wanted to give up personally. So a lot of the girls didn't really go that route. They just, you know, got careers and decided that bowling would kind of take a back seat. Sure. That's rough. I mean, you know, what 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 do you see the next five years for the, the women's league? You know, it's hard to say. You know, I'm hopeful that it's sustainable and that there's going to be something for us to compete in. But, you know, we also have to be realistic that year after year, you know, it's, it's not something that makes money at the time, at the moment. So, you know, at any given time, it can be possibly taken away from us. So, you know, we experienced that during the COVID yeah. year of 2020 where we did not compete on tour. So it was just a real, at any given moment, anything can just stop, you know? So I think the women specifically, we compete with more of a grateful heart, yeah. um, just given the opportunities that were given because we didn't have them for so long. And, um, you know, we just kind of appreciate any bowling center that wants to host us and have an event at their place. Are you getting any uh, streaming time or, or, or TV time yet? Oh, yeah. That's, my show was actually televised on CBS Sports. So that was live on TV That's last awesome. weekend. And just this past Sunday was the USBC Queens event. So, or not Sunday, Tuesday, Tuesday, um, USBC Queens event. We have seven events that are live televised this year. Two of them already happened. And it's on CBS Sports? Mm hmm Perfect. You know, what are some of the cool places you've traveled to? Mainly, I guess, for, for Team USA. Gosh. Believe it or not, bowling is... I would even argue much more popular overseas than it is in the United States at more of a highly competitive level. Yeah. I think recreationally in the States it's very popular. Um, but we've been to the Middle East. We've been to Hong Kong, uh, Peru. I think every place we've been has been unique in its own right. You know, we're fortunate that, you know, we're able to travel a couple days maybe ahead of time to get acclimated and, I see a little bit, 
you know, sure. um, the schedules are pretty intense when we get there that, you know, we have a job to do and a mission to complete. So when it's game time, it's, it's, it's all full. So um, I would say every place that we've ever been to has just brought its own unique experience. And nice. uh, pretty cool that we've been able to compete around the world and do something that we love to do. And essentially, I mean, we have friends everywhere. So that's just, it's just really cool. I, I, I can't wait to share your story because I, I most of the people I know when I was saying, oh, I got a professional bowler, I'd like to talk to one. They're like, how much do they travel? And I'm like, you know, I'm looking you up at Abu Dhabi and all these different places. And I'm like, bowling can take you around the world. Yeah, this year is a big year for our team um, with quite a few events um, that are coming up. We got World Games. We have a couple of events in South America. There's an event in Australia. So, you know, bowling is worldwide, you know, and it's just, it's really amazing that that's the one thing that connects us. Yeah. You know, I mean, I have many, many friends that don't bowl and um, it's just a unique experience that the one thing that some of us chose to do connects yeah. us with people around the world, you know? Absolutely. If I was ever stranded somewhere, I could make maybe couple phone calls and be just fine. <laughs> See, that's so cool that, that bowling did that for you. I think that's awesome. Right. Yeah. I know I, my, my aunt and uncle have been in Plano, Texas for 40 years now. I got cousins in Denton, friends in Paradise. Do you like being centralized there? Does that, you think that helps you with the tour part of it? I moved to the Dallas area back in 2008 when bowling headquarters had moved there. Um, okay. That essentially was the reason that brought me to Texas. Um, I had just graduated with my master's degree um, from Central Florida, and I just wanted to move. I just wanted to go somewhere where bowling would be affluent and um, I might have some opportunities because, again, there was no women's tour. So just kind of up and left with my roommate at the time and we both got jobs at headquarters and never really looked back. I mean, I, I do love being centralized in Texas. Um, pretty grounded there. My husband has lived there his entire life. Nice. And um, I don't foresee us leaving anytime soon. So You're Texas bound, so you're good there. I like it. You know, what, what's the what's the best way for my listeners to follow you and and the league as what as far as what's coming up in t different tournaments? Yeah, for sure. So pwba.com is our website. Uh, that is where our schedule is. All the players are listed there. Uh, they can kind of follow where we're going to be. Like I said, we're going to Egan, Minnesota, which is yeah. right in between uh, Minneapolis and St. Paul. We're staying near the Mall of America, which is only fun. Yeah. Um, but yeah, after that, we'll go to Florida and we'll have a little stint in New York and then, uh, we'll kind of end up in Texas. So that, that will be nice, there but it's go. a shorter, shorter season this year, just because everything's a little more condensed. Yeah. Well, and then it's Stephanie with an F, not a PH. Right. So uh, I, I'll, I'll definitely get people over to your web uh, to your Instagram site too. Yeah, that'd be great. Stephanie J underscore PWBA. There you go. That's, well, that's I, my handle for all of them. So Yeah, because I actually saw you on TikTok is how I ran into you. Yep. So that's pretty cool. I'm there as well. <laughs> well, I'll make sure to, to have all, all your, your links connected on my website so people can just easily go and see what you got going on. Awesome. Thank you so much for your Thanks time. Thanks for having me. Have a good rest of the drive. Have a good practice, and then obviously get that 300 this weekend. <laughs> That's always the goal. I'll there do you my go. Best. Thanks, Stephanie. Thanks for your time. Have a great day. Take care. Bye bye.